This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear Ms. Penny Jones being interviewed for a job by Mr. White. Look at questions one to five on the form now. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning, Ms. Jones. I'm David White, our personnel manager. Good morning. Ah, please take a seat. Thank you. Well, did you manage to find us easily enough? Oh, no problem. But the traffic was terrible. I was terrified I'd be late. Well, you made it on time, so no problem. How did you get here? I took the bus. But even the bus lane was blocked. I know the problem. Well, let's start with a few personal details to make sure everything on the printout of your application form is correct. Our computers have been doing funny things lately. Full name, Penny Ann Jones. Yes, that's correct. British citizen, date of birth, January the 3rd, 1980. That's right. And your address, 28 Green Lane, Oxford. Actually, no, that's my old address. Uh, I was living there when I applied, but now I've moved to flat 502, 56 Rose Gardens. But it's still in Oxford. OK, I'll just change that. Good. And is your home phone the same? Yes, 7984865. And your email, jenny27 at hotmail.com? Yes, that's it. Look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to more of the conversation between Ms. Penny Jones and Mr. White and answer questions 6 to 10. And you have a first-class honours degree in public health management from Keele University? Yes. What made you choose this major, Miss Jones? Well, both my parents are doctors, and I got my interest in health and things from them. But I wasn't sure that I wanted to be a doctor myself. At the same time, I wanted to be involved in the health field, and I thought public health management would be ideal. Also, I've always been interested in politics and the environment, so I figured this would allow me to satisfy various interests. I can't disagree. Us workers in the county public health department are often faced with a health threat from pollution or unsafe working conditions. We try to do something about it, and most companies or government departments are very cooperative, but it's not unusual to find a company that isn't. They start threatening things like loss of jobs, and of course that's always a political hot potato, especially with unemployment running around 11% in the country. So what do you think about such things, Miss Jones? Well, I think the first thing is that some companies think meeting environmental standards is expensive, but so many companies find that they can reduce costs by adopting cleaner technologies.
That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You are going to hear an introduction to a kindergarten. First, look at questions 11 to 16. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon, everybody. First, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Sunny Skies Nursery School. My name is Doris Matthews, and I'm the headmistress. First of all, I'll describe our philosophy of early education along with our teaching principles. I'll try not to sound like a teacher giving a lecture. Then we'll have a tour of the school and finish with tea and sandwiches in the staff room where you can meet our teachers and administrative staff. They will all be very happy to meet you and answer any questions you might have. First, as you know, we base our teaching, or should I say learning, because we try to help our children discover and learn for themselves, rather than simply try to teach them facts. We base our efforts on the principles discovered by that wonderful Italian educator and doctor, Maria Montessori. This means we believe learning best takes place in an atmosphere in which the children interact a lot and learn from each other. This encourages them to be lifelong learners and problem solvers. For decades, many studies have shown that children, and even us adults, learn through the senses. Our children learn by manipulating materials, toys, sand, blocks, almost anything, and interacting with others. They have fun as they learn, and these experiences help them to form on their own, with of course a little bit of help from the teacher, abstract ideas. We try to cultivate the whole person, believing that the spiritual, emotional, physical, cognitive, and social interests and needs are all equally important and interdependent. We also do our best to foster respect for each other and the environment. We find that our school garden, where they learn the magic of life, the need to recycle organic resources, how sad that so many people around the world think their kitchen waste is just that, waste, and maintain healthy soil for growing our food. But you'll see for yourselves. You'll be able to taste some of our home-grown tomatoes and things when we have a snack in the staff room. Some of our children's most magical moments have been when they see the seeds they planted sprouting up through the soil. Now look at questions 17 to 20.
as the talk continues, answer questions 17 to 20. Well, that's enough about our philosophy and method of education. I'm sure we'll enjoy chatting about it some more when we meet the staff. Now I'd like to show you around. It's a lovely day, so we'll start with the vegetable garden. I'm sure you've all guessed that we are very proud of our garden. You can see it outside the balcony. It's on the south side of the school, so it gets lots of sun. On the left, the east side, you can see the classroom block. Actually, we don't see them as classrooms in the normal sense. They are more like activity and play centers. And on the opposite side, we have the dining hall and the kitchen. Behind us, across the courtyard, we have the offices and the staff room. So, out we go. So, here we are in our garden. We grow all the vegetables we need for the children's and the staff's lunches for the whole year. The greenhouse you see over there is a great help in the winter and spring. I can't begin to tell you how much the children love their garden. And they learn so much. Not just how to grow things, but also arithmetic, weights, and measures. They love seeing how heavy the biggest tomato or potato or whatever it is. They also love getting dirty. But doctors tell us that's good for the healthy development of strong immune systems. Have you read those reports about how kids who never come into contact with a bit of dirt or with animals are much more likely to suffer from asthma? It's fascinating. But don't worry, we make sure they have a good wash before they go home. So, shall we have a look at the classrooms now? We have small classes, usually no more than 10 children per class, but we also have a lot of activities in which the whole school joins in. Sports, running around the outside of the school to warm up on a winter's day, singing. We always enjoy a song or two when we have our daily morning assembly in the assembly hall. Okay, here we are in the first classroom. You see the ten or so small foam rubber mattresses over there by the cupboard? And we have blankets inside the cupboard. They are for after lunch, when we like the children to have an hour's sleep. Then they have lots of energy until it's time to go home. Oh, I just saw Miss Robbins taking the sandwiches to the staff room. Let's go there now and meet the staff. They are always so excited to meet our children's parents. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You will hear three students talking about revising for exams. First, listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. You now have some time to read questions 21 to 25. Hi, Bob. Hi, Harry. Where's Jill? I really need her. She's the brainy one. Me too, but she's always late. I think that's her. I'd recognize her footsteps anywhere. 
Good morning, boys. Sorry I'm a bit late. I was photocopying some things that you might find useful for reviewing for the exams. I know you missed those lectures. Been waiting long? The traffic is so heavy. Nah, just got here. Good. Okay, but I'm really busy, so why don't we start? I know you wanted these photocopies, but what else? This is a bit embarrassing, Jill, but Bob and I are really worried about these exams. I haven't prepared for them, and we only have two weeks. My parents will kill me if I don't pass. Same here. The thing is, you always do so well in exams, and, uh. Well, we know you know a lot about studying and things, so we thought you might be able to give us a few tips. A few tips? If you both spent more time with your books and went to classes, you wouldn't need any tips. You think the bar is more important. Yeah, well, but we'd be really grateful if you. You know. We really need your help, Jill. Okay, okay. I know you too, guys. The first thing you have to do is organize your time. You're both so disorganized, and you don't have your priorities right. Having fun is always more important. I know, I know. But I'm really going to do what you tell us, Jill. Got no choice. Me too. I can only make a few suggestions. Really simple ones. Basic stuff. Obvious. But it's obvious you two don't have a clue. Ready for Mummy's talk? I guess so. Yeah. As the conversation continues, please answer questions 26 to 30. You now have some time to read questions 26 to 30. Organize your time. Set aside a time for 40 minutes for exercise every day and stick to it. Is that too difficult? I guess not. And no going partying or to the pub every night, okay? This is sounding difficult. Okay, fail your exams, then tell your mom and dad. No, we're listening, Jill. Right. No parties or drinking for three weeks, agree? Yeah, guess so. What else? As soon as I've gone, write down a timetable. Eating time, exercise time, sleeping time. We've only got one or two classes left before the exams, so most of the rest of the time you can spend reviewing. But you have to stick to it. We will. But then what? Don't try to learn or review everything in one go. And take a five-minute break every hour. Get up and walk around. You should know all this. I suppose I do but I never actually did it. Same here. And one last thing. For five or ten minutes every hour, are you going to review together? Guess so. For the last few minutes, tell each other what you've learned in the past 40 minutes. That really helps it stick in your memory. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4. You are going to hear a presentation on suggestions for the facilities required in a school that is to be built. You now have some time to read questions 31 to 40.
Good afternoon. Members of the Green Forest Golf and Country Club, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Parker Education Research Company, it is my pleasure to present you with the results of our feasibility study and recommendations for the facilities of the new private school that you are considering having built in Green Forest. First, the green light, our feasibility study. It shows that building the school makes economic sense. It would be a good investment. May I briefly explain how we came to this conclusion, how we conducted our study? There are just over 7,500 households in Green Forest and a population of 31,000. If you look at the graph on the screen, you will see that the average annual income of these households last year was £83,000 a year, which is far above the national average of £41,000. We did a random survey of 10% of the 3,200 families with a household income of over 50000 and found that they had an average of 0 0.33 children between the ages of 8 and 12 the age of local children who would be most likely to attend the school, which, if the project is approved, will open in two years' time. So this means there are about 1,000 children in Green Forest who will be of the right age, and with parents who could probably afford it, to attend the proposed new private school. After explaining the concept, we found that just over one-third of these parents are very enthusiastic about sending their children to the type of school that you have in mind. The rest were not sure, or completely satisfied with the state schools. We did not do a survey in the two nearby towns, but seeing that they also have a high percentage of quite wealthy people, roughly the same demographics, and have no nearby top-class schools to which to send their children, we are confident that at least 50, probably near 100, pupils could be attracted from these towns as students when the school opens. This means there are at least 300 local students whose parents would be very keen on sending them to the proposed new school. This would be enough to make the school break even in the second year. As new classrooms and other facilities were added in the second and third years, especially two residences, one for male and one for female students from elsewhere in the country and overseas, then the economic prospects look even better. I mentioned facilities, and I know you have been discussing this a lot among yourselves. Our survey shows that there are several essential facilities that almost all the people we questioned would require before sending their children here. I will not list them in any order of importance. They are all seen to be very important. The first is a good language lab. Very few of the parents we spoke to are fluent in a foreign language and do not want their children to be the same. It seems most of them mention the word globalization and see the importance of foreign languages, and not just French and other European languages. Many of them mention Chinese. Another essential is good sports facilities, including an Olympic-sized indoor swimming pool and a well-equipped gym. A lot of the parents were overweight. I guess they don't want their kids to get in the same way. Two multiple-use pitches, one for rugby and soccer, the other for field hockey and athletics, would be required. Fortunately, the land for these would not be a problem, as the governors and members of this golf and country club have agreed that the golf practice range is far bigger than needed, and part of it could be used for these outdoor sports. In addition, the location is ideal right next to the proposed site of the school itself. Another and very obvious requirement is that the school have a state-of-the-art computer study center. It would not have to be big enough to accommodate more than, say, 10% of the students at any one time, because virtually all of them have their own computers at home. 
but no computer games unless they are educational was a frequent response to the computer studies question. I know that several of you work for large computer companies, so maybe you could use your influence to keep costs down and quality high. A cafeteria? Interestingly enough, one thing some people mentioned, perhaps it's a bit early to worry about this, was that they would not want their children to have access to fast food. Other things, all of which are seen as essential, and that we have included in the budget, are a good-sized main hall, with a large stage for school drama productions, etc., and good facilities for music, pianos, everything for a school orchestra, all the things many of the parents didn't have when they were young. That is the end of Part 4. You now have one minute to check your answers to Part 4. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.